still couldn't go past this magnificent looking aircraft here and I've got Ray Taylor, the owner of this uh, Stardust, is that what it's called? It's a, it's a Starduster 2, Carlos, and uh, designed, uh, I would think, in the early 70s by a guy called Lou Stolp in, uh, in California. And uh, he designed a range of aircraft and this is the two-seater version. There's a, there's a more serious aerobatic version that he designed. But I uh, started this project, it, it, it was imported by Rob Wetnall, he imported two uh, projects in, uh, well, 2009 thereabouts, just at the point I was about to retire. And it just so happens he, uh, he only needed one and he had a spare one, so I took the spare one off his hands and in the, between 2009 and 2014, I was building it, so it first flew in December last year. Is that right? So when you say you were building it, at what stage did you actually get it? Was it all just from nothing? Or? These, well, can we just break a bit while the warbirds take off? A lot of noise there. <laughs> yes, yeah, see... What a beautiful sound, though. This aircraft is, is as a home-built aircraft, it's what they call scratch-built as opposed to a kit-built. So you don't buy pieces that are already formed. You've got to just buy a bunch of raw materials and build it. So all you get is the plans and you're you off on your own. A set of plans, 20 pages, and you start with a bunch of wood and a bunch of tubing and put it all together. So it's a long-term sort of thing for most people and you find that many of them, many of the people who start the project don't get to finish it and uh, because life gets in the way and other things. So we got this uh, in a semi-finished condition. The wings were framed, the fuselage was framed and uh, most of the welding was done and then it's just a matter of, well just a matter, that's a bit of an understatement, yeah, okay. but, <laughs> but uh, we ended up customising, making it uh, to suit your requirements basically yeah. and uh, building it. But, I've built an RV, uh, one, uh, RV6, and we built that 15-odd uh, years ago. That took me three years to build, uh, pretty serious work. And this one, in its semi-finished state when we got it, took another sort of six years to build. So. That is real dedication. Now, a lot of work. Oh, yeah. Now, having had that background of having built an RV, um, uh, did you find that that was essential to do one of these, or can anybody just jump in and have a go at it? Well... I think what you need is dedication and a bit of spare time and uh, a, yeah, a lot of uh, sort of willingness to take one small step at a time and, and persevere to the end. That's the biggest thing to, uh, to just keep going because you've got to look at it as a series of small tasks. Yeah. But it, building a scratch-built aircraft is certainly nothing like an RV, and an RV is obviously all metal, so yeah. it's riveting and it's sheet metal work. Yeah. This is... Technically, it's composite. It's steel tube, it's aluminium panels, it's wood frame on the wings, and it's, uh, and it's fabric covered. So all of the disciplines in building this is significantly different to, to the RV experience. Yeah, just a fabric covering is a, is a task in its own, isn't it? It, it is, and it's certainly uh, a lot of things to absorb and to understand about it, but... The, the manuals going with the fabric system is is uh, pretty comprehensive and if you follow the steps in the manual it's yeah. it's no problem really yeah. now what's it powered by in this engine i've got essentially it's a lycoming clone it was built by a crowd called aerosport power in canada so it's a 200 horsepower fuel injected lycoming engine Beautiful. Now, when I first saw it, I thought, geez, it reminded me of um, uh, Chris Spiro's uh, uh, Stinker. It's got a similar shape well, and everything. It, it is. It's, it's certainly not uh, a performance aircraft to the same level as that. That's just a hardcore aerobatic machine. Yeah. This is good for what you'd call gentleman's aerobatics, right. and that's pretty much where I live as far as my... Uh, G loadings are concerned. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you'll get a few G loads on these, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, it, it's good for plus six, minus six. So it's it's capable as an aerobatic machine, but it's certainly not as uh, not as mad as a pits. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. But plus six, minus six, that's enough. Yes, it's certainly uh, well. From it gives you a, a decent margin, put yeah, it that way, because yeah. I, I don't like much more than plus four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now we've got uh, Daisy Bell here. You want to? 
Give us a bit of story on that. Well, the nose art was designed by my daughter-in-law. It's uh, it's named after my first granddaughter, and uh, her name's Daisy Isabel. So we contracted that to Daisy Bell with a bit of a nod to to the Memphis Bell, actually. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm having a bit of trouble now satisfying my second granddaughter. She's looking for what airplane is going to be named after her. So I'm not too sure that there might be another project in the. F- <laughs> oh, what a big sacrifice there, right? That's right. That's right. Right. She's going to have to shop around for another one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, brilliant, right? Uh, look, congratulations. This is an absolutely stunning aircraft. It's well, very well finished. You know? It's got uh, only a few hours into its test program at the moment. I have discovered that open cockpits and Melbourne winters uh, don't go together too well. So uh, it's due for its... Well, we're going to start the new flying season. I've got another few hours to fly off the test program and, and then we're... Uh, we're good to go and spread the wings a bit wider in terms of uh, cross-country flying and that sort of thing. So. Just out of interest, um, as you're building this, you obviously got to get uh, inspections by the Civil Aviation Authority or anyone like that? Or? The uh, the building process is administered by the SAAA and we've got a, you know, being at TIAB here, we're well uh, served by maintenance organisations and we've certainly uh, got a large group of sport aviation enthusiasts, so there's there's no shortage of uh, of support and advice in terms of the building process when you get stuck with a particular problem. So right. that's that's all good, but uh, it's just a matter of tapping into that network yeah. and, and getting getting the support you need. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, look great. Thanks very much for giving us a bit of your time today. It was all uh, without warning, without <laughs> notice. Enjoy the day, and thanks very Thank much. You, Congratulations Carl. on a beautiful aeroplane, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you. No worries. Thanks.